It is not easy to speak out for Palestinian human rights at a time when Palestinians are being bombarded by Israel and supported by American taxpayers. In fact, many people have faced backlash. Many people are afraid to speak out because of that backlash. Specifically, journalists and editors and folks who work in media have lost their jobs over their stances for a ceasefire, um, over naming something that they see as genocide and calling it genocide. Um, so a few journalists who have lost their jobs, let's take a look at, this is nothing to do with politics or anything. But a Philadelphia 76ers uh, sports writer, J Jackson Frank, um, basically disagreed with his um, news outlet's stance when the 76ers, excuse me, when the 76ers tweeted, not the, the team stance, they, sta they tweeted, we stand with the people of Israel and join them in mourning the hundreds of innocent lives lost to terrorism at the hands of Hamas along with the hashtag stand, stand with Israel. Now, arguably that's not that crazy of a sentiment at all. Um, but he responded and just quote tweeted and said, nah, this post sucks. Solidarity with Palestine always. Frank who had only recently joined the phillyvoice.com as a sports reporter since deleted the tweet, but he was also let go, um, which he didn't call for violence. He just said the post sucked. I mean, I guess his job is to cover the 76ers, but there's a lot more than just that. Um, other reporters have been taken off air over their social media posts. One cartoonist had their contact contract with a British newspaper terminated after penning an illustration attacking Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, um, which many thought included an anti Semitic anti-Semitic trope. The removals follow several previous sackings at international news outlets. We know that even um, Greta Thunberg uh, reposted a post uh, that had her calling for a ceasefire and cropping out an octopus because apparently that is an anti-Semitic trope. Truly anything can be considered an anti-Semitic trope if it is taken in bad faith. We know that Ilhan Omar has had that also um, levied at her. Um, it doesn't stop there. The editor in chief of a life and science academic journal Eli Michael Eisen quote tweeted The Onion and said, The Onion speaks with more courage, insight, and moral clarity than the leaders of every academic institution put together. I wish there was an Onion University. Ten, uh, ten days later, I have been informed that I am being replaced as the editor in chief of Eli for retweeting an Onion piece that calls out the indifference to the lives of Palestinian civilians. That, that headline was, Dying Gazans criticized for not using last words to condemn Hamas. It is satirical, it is it is searing. And the fact that he got fired over it means maybe he was uh, onto something. Um, then finally, um, Creative Arts Agency, CAA um, talent agency uh, fired or what forced one of their top agents in Hollywood, Maha Dakil, to resign. Um, she posted an Instagram story on Wednesday that read, you're currently learning who supports genocide. She added her own message over the reposting stating, that's the line for me. She subsequently posted a second photo that was captioned, what's more heartbreaking than witnessing genocide, witnessing the denial that genocide is happening. Um, then she was basically forced out at CAA and she was also forced to make an apology statement. I'm not gonna read that. Um, she took down her post. I think it is absolutely absurd to make someone like that apologize for something as benign as saying, can we not turn our blind eye to what is happening in front of us, to genocide? Um, but it goes on and on and on. Senator, the most recent one was a very, very important art magazine called Art Forum. Um, put out a joint letter from the writers and the staff um, condemning and calling for a ceasefire, basically saying enough is enough, let's stop the bloodshed. And the editor in chief who had been working there for I believe over a decade, was forced to resign and other staffers resigned in solidarity with him. He says he has no regrets over that. So it is a big move, no matter where you're at and what, what field you work in. Maybe other than this job here that I have, if I didn't, I would feel fairly unsafe in condemning. Um, I mean, I would, I would still do that because I'm actually allergic to money. I don't know if anyone knows that about me, um, but, but like, you know, a lot of folks, are not able to speak out and feel like they are sent being censored. Well, they are being, I mean, what happened to freedom of speech in this country is free, but only so free. And what we're seeing is that the crushing, the power forces will come bear down on people who speak up and speak out in a way that they do not agree with. This is very much giving me McCarthyism vibes from the 1950s. If people are certainly students of history, remember reading or studying that as a time when if you spoke out, 
uh, if you spoke out in that time about you know the red scare and all of that kind of stuff, your very livelihood was on the line, and you had a politician similar to how we have right now today uh, weighing in on it, threatening people. Um, people lost their jobs, they lost their livelihoods in the same way that people are losing their jobs and their livelihoods right now. We would like to think that we have evolved a lot in the 21st century, but obviously we see that not much has changed. And as a species, as a human species, we certainly have not evolved enough uh, to overcome this moment. So it is really sad. Any and all of us are vulnerable at any given moment that what just happened to those uh, employees, the examples and that you just gave, Francesca, and there are others, that yeah. any and everybody is can be can can lose their job. Um, it also remind well, forget it. You know, I'm not gonna go. I was gonna talk about some Black History moments too, uh, but I'll, I'll put that in the parking lot for now. Let's just say that this is wrong, and if we truly are a nation where freedom of speech prevails, no one should be happy that people are being fired from their jobs for just voicing. Uh, a sentiment that they don't want to see innocent lives lost and that all lives, whether they're Palestinian lives or Israeli lives, matter equally. Yeah, and look, none of these statements are I support Hamas, right? I no, mean, we, we are living in a an upside down hall of mirrors where people are being told that they support terrorism, and none That's of right. these people have ever either, you know, uh, cagely or outwardly said anything of the sort. Um, and this is also happening on campuses. We haven't even covered the amount of um, uh, targeting of, of student groups and the fact yeah. that Ron DeSantis is trying to make speaking out against uh, Israeli war crimes. To be to be a crime on campuses. Um, this is not only you know on this on top of this was before the war even kicked off. I believe the dozen or more states in this country that make it illegal to boycott or divest or sanction Israel or Israeli government or entities, excuse me, businesses because of the occupation. That is literally illegal, and it's being spearheaded by the right, which again. Claims to love free speech, except for when it comes to talking about Palestinians, except for when it comes about being gay, except for, you know, things that they don't like. Or so black. So again, or black. I mean, it's you it's know, an again. abuse of power, Francesca. I mean, that if we want to sum all of this up, it is an abuse of power. People taking out full page ads against students, you know, as yeah. you just laid, I think it was Harvard, a university, but just taking out full page ads against students. For the love of God. I mean, we really need to analyze this because it's this issue today. What other issue will it be tomorrow? And that's what makes this so galling is that if we allow this kind of behavior to continue without being checked, then it'll be another issue that other people care about tomorrow. It is definitely a slippery slope. And for those who are not familiar about, uh, uh, familiar of what happened in 1950s under McCarthyism, I dare you just to take a little, just a little, you don't have to go deep, but just, just a superficial research on McCarthyism and the fallout and the consequences that it had to individuals and communities because people were labeled a certain way. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to their credit, they're definitely, I mean, you know, we're not gonna talk about Palestinian human rights anymore. I mean, students, whenever they get told not to talk about something, they usually stop. Yeah, they do. They obey. They <laughs> like, obey real well. <laughs> It'll go over real well. They'll they'll stop looking into it. They'll stop learning. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.